Okay, so this is my second moon style deck that I am uh, reviewing uh, back to back. Uh, the other one I'll put a link to below is Queen of the Moon Oracle. And uh, there are differences between these two decks. Obviously the art style and everything are completely different. But one of the main differences that I wanted to point out is that this um, has a broader uh, cycle and focuses much more on the new and full moons in their s in individual signs. Whereas the difference is this deck um, has a card for every single one of the moon of this the moon cycle so you can follow the 28 day moon cycle in cards with this one whereas this is a little bit broader which you'll see in a minute where instead of every day you have sort of the basic uh, cycle of the moon that you see a, a lot of uh, you generally see eight I think this is seven seven cards so you'll see no this thing is eight one two three four. No, I think it's seven. So this just kind of broadens it so you have waxing crescent, whereas this one is going to have all of the days of the month that are going to be in a waxing crescent phase. Uh, so that's the primary, other than artwork and this kind of thing, the primary difference for me is that this focuses on the moon in the signs and this focuses entirely on the moon and the really fully onto the cycle of the moon. So I just wanted to point that out because I, since I am doing these back to back. So I have these kind of spread out. I have used these. I have already shuffled this deck and used it. And so uh, as I was putting it back together, I wanted to kind of put it uh, some piles so that we can talk about the way that this deck is broke down. Uh, there are these cards here I want to talk about a little bit separately because in some ways these kind of feel like redundant cards but at the same time I can see where they would fit in. So let's just take a quick look and then we'll put it all together and I'll do a flip through. So you have at the beginning of the deck, uh, number one, uh, so let me pause for a minute. I just, I, whenever I split this off, I get too excited, right? So we are talking about the Moonology Oracle Cards, which is a 44 card deck and guidebook by Yasmin Boland with the artwork by Nix Rowan. Now there is a book that goes, that came first called Moonology. I have not read it. I have heard good things about it. I've also heard heard um, some reviews that or read some reviews that it is probably a little bit better perhaps for people who don't have any astrological base the book is kind of geared towards people who don't have a very strong foundation in astrology so that made me hesitant to uh, pick it up uh, because I do feel like I have a pretty solid foundation in astrology so I'm not sure about that uh, but there is a book that came prior to this deck um, this is a Hay House deck. Uh, it runs for $18.99. I got it with a coupon for about $15. I'm pretty sure on Amazon you can get it for around $15 at least in the U.S. Um, I do love the inside. I do feel like Hay House has um, really picked up on their box and deck production. So I love this moon landscape and let your moon, let the moon be your guide on the inside. You know, they've just for $15, I've said this in the last couple decks I've done of theirs, but for 15 to $18, I feel like they've really stepped up their their game if you like matte cardstock which I do so uh, if you like more of that glossy cardstock then you might be disappointed but I'm uh, you know a huge fan of this shift so yeah beautiful book box you know typical Hay House lovely uh, the guidebook is about 115 pages you have a um, black and white thumbnail you have the kind of phrase that's there and then what it is so look at the bigger picture for full moon and Sagittarius and then you have uh, an attune to the moon something you might do to attune yourself some additional meanings and sort of a teaching uh, moment for each so you have two pages for each of the cards uh, let's see are there any introduction 
what you're using them for, blessing them, the wisdom of the moon, uh, um, uh, of the moon here. And then it goes into, the, gives you a kind of shortcut of the phases of the moon here. So you have the kind of the phase, phases here and sort of some keywords that would go. I would personally have almost uh, preferred that there have been keywords on these cards rather than some of these phrases. Because there are some of these phrases that um, fall a little bit short with me. It wouldn't stop me from using the deck, but I almost would have just preferred some of the keywords. Um, and then it talks about the structure of the cards, which we will be doing. It gives you a little breakdown of the four elements. And then it has a Celtic cross spread, which I think is very strange in a moon deck, to be honest. Um, you know, that's, I spent many years using a Celtic cross and I am a fan of the Celtic cross. Uh, even though I've used my own version now uh, that doesn't even look like a Celtic cross. Uh, but I do like large uh, general spreads, but for a Oracle deck, I, did, I felt that was a little bit strange to put in there. Uh, a three card spread, new moon, full moon, waxing moon, four, four card, waning moon, four card, so for full moon, new moon, waning, and waxing, it gives you a spread. So that's nice. I think that's really helpful. And then it goes into the cards itself uh, here. And we'll read one of them when we get to flipping through of the book, so, or of the deck. So again, in terms of setup, we have the structure, and there's no numbers on these, uh, so uh, they aren't hard to find though because they're kind of in their sections, moon phases, new moons, full moons, and special moon cards, so I didn't find them particularly difficult to be able to find in the guidebook. Um, so you go through the phases of the moon from new moon, waxing crescent, first quarter, gibbous moon, full moon, disseminating moon, third quarter, and basalmic moon. Uh, so you have the, the moon phases with the moon in the middle, uh, kind of referencing the size and the shape of what it would be. So um, that, that's really beautiful. You've got sort of those basic cards. Uh, now what, let's stop for a moment there though and talk about what is a little bit redundant, right? So here we have a waxing and a waning moon card. Now we have the waxing phase where things are uh, waxing, right? <laughs> um, so we have the waxing crescent moon, we have the first quarter, we have the gibbous moon. Those are, wa those are waxing cards. Uh, and then we have the waning where it's going down with the disseminating the third quarter and the basalmic. So now these are waning and going the other direction. We have those cards, three of them that are in that phase. So I'm not entirely sure that these are necessary, but I will say that in terms of um, doing a, a, a general reading, because then you say to yourself, okay, well, let's say I get the waxing crescent moon, and then I also get the waxing moon in a reading, right? So obviously, in some ways, this would be similar to maybe getting a two of cups and a two of swords, right? Or two swords in a, in a reading instead of just one sword. So we have the energy um, of the crescent itself, along with the energy, the extra energy of things that are, oh, oh, I don't know why I went this way because waxing would go more this way, uh, gain this idea of gaining momentum. And they are different messages where this is sort of having faith in your dreams and this is it's starting to gain momentum. So really pay attention to that energy. So I think in an oracle reading that may or may not be helpful. That's something you'll have to think about. Obviously, you can just leave these cards out uh, of the deck if you, like me, are kind of questioning. I will leave them in and see how they turn up in readings more. I've done some readings with it. I haven't had them show up uh, together, but um, so that's kind of questionable about whether these are really um, just redundant to six other cards, you know, three three waxing and three waning uh, cards in the deck. The other thing that's interesting is that they have the um, mutable cardinal and fixed uh, moons here. So again, uh, we are looking at a lot with this deck is focused on the signs. So we have full moons and new moons 
in uh, each one of the signs. And so if you are familiar with astrology, uh, these are uh, considered the modalities, right? And so these are shows us um, how the energy of the particular uh, element of a sign is moving or acting, right? And so we have, let me show you a chart here. Show you my chart in my little white book. So if you look down here, we have the four elements, right? So fire, earth, air, and water. And then we have four cardinal signs, four fixed signs, and four mutable signs. So um, cardinal speaking of action and just general rule, fixed security, and mutable about learning, uh, changing, shifting, right? So we have Aries, Capricorn, Libra, and Cancer. These are cardinal signs. Fixed signs are Leo, Taurus, Aquarius, and Scorpio. Mutable signs are Sagittarius, Virgo, Gemini, and Pisces, right? Um, so we have a new moon and a full moon in each one of these areas. So we actually have four new moon cardinal cards, and we have four, uh, four full moon for each one of these. So we do have the energy of mutable cardinal and fixed within those built in, so to speak. Now, what's interesting though, is that I think that there is a way that you could, these might actually be helpful. Um, because you may not be speaking just about a full moon or a new moon, which kind of have its own connotations, where this is generally this idea of nothing being set in stone. We have the water here. We have the be bold, making that first move action of the cardinal moon. We have that security, hold your vision, hold your position with the fixed moon. Uh, so you can have that as a general message, whereas these are much more specific. So that's kind Kind of what these five cards they are already present within the deck itself but if you're not overly comfortable with knowing let's say which of you know is what is Aries like is that a fixed moon or a cardinal moon or a um, mutable moon like if you don't know those things because it's not written on there having those energies in place where you can tap into those are going to help you to get comfortable with those types of uh, those those themes in astrology um, so, so yeah, so that's that, that's why I wanted to talk about these a little bit because in many ways these are redundant because they are already in place in the deck. But in terms of an oracle deck, it's possible these might be interesting to have show up just like we do have multiple, obviously, twos and threes and fours and fives. We have multiple swords, multiple cups. So there is a way in which this may uh, be fine. These also, again, can be left out of the deck if you do feel uh, that they are too redundant for you. I'll be leaving them in unless I come to find that they feel too redundant. So I wanted to talk about those uh, for a moment. Um, so we have the cycles here of the moon. We have these cards that I just talked about, which are part of sort of extra, uh, I don't see how she labels it. It's part of her special moon cards. So here we have the new moon and the full moon in eclipse. That makes sense to me. Those are special moons and they, we should have those. We have a void of course card. Nothing is going to come. It's just everything is stopped right now. I do actually like having a blue moon and a super moon. Now, you know, making clear that full moon or super moons and blue moons are full moons, right? So again, you could say that's a little bit redundant because we already have a full moon card. Uh, so why do we need to add in a um, blue moon and a super moon? So the book describes a super moon as a new or a full moon that takes place when the moon is closest at its closest point to the earth during its monthly orbit, an event known as a perigee. If it's a full moon, the um, Oops, my brain, my eyes unfocused. If it's a full moon, the moon appears around 14% bigger. I have seen I have seen in Africa, it's one of the experiences, you know, we have these certain experiences in life that really stick with us for our entire lifetime. I was like 18 years old and I was in Africa 
and we were in out you know we were in uh, West Africa in a little country called Togo and we were in the jungle and there was a valley and there was a of course a rim around the valley so we were up on the rim of the valley uh, and there was a super full moon and it literally I've said it before and I think in other videos but it literally was at this huge almost movie kind of moon like you just it looks like from a, obviously where I was on the planet and where the moon was all this kind of stuff it just was this massive full moon um, I was 18 that probably started my love affair with the moon and yes I do have a love affair with the moon so and it, that's the moment in which it started because it was so immense and so beautiful and so just right there in my face um, and so that was um, so anyways, that was most likely. I guess I could try to figure out the date of it, but I'm guessing that most likely that was a super moon. Um, and then the uh, deck talks about the blue moon as that there are usually three moons, three full moons between each equinox and solstice or vice versa. Sometimes though we get four full moons in a single season. When that happens, the third of the season's four full moons is called a blue moon. At least that was the original definition of a blue moon. These days, she says, it's popular to use the blue moon for the second full moon in any calendar month. So those you often, and I will agree with her, you often see people say um, it is this, when you have two blue, two moons in a month, it's a blue moon. But it looks like originally it was this more seasonal thing, which is interesting uh, as well, just to think of that. So um, this so blue moon is is 100% a full moon. Apparently, super moons, which I always think of as full moons, but can also be new moons as well. So um, obviously, that super moon might be the full moon in Aries, right? But then you could lay out the super moon with that as well, just to indicate that the, this is a super moon. It's still just a full moon, but I do do extra things on super moons. I love it. I love to have super moons where it's raining because that's one of my favorite times to collect moon water is on super moons so I, it is something that I pay attention to even though technically it's just a full moon right or new moon that you that you already have represented here um, so we have those and then we also have the uh, north node and the south node. Now I actually really like having these here and I wish more moon type decks or astrology decks would have the nodes because I use the nodes a lot for um, um, I use the nodes a lot for past life uh, so focusing in on past, past life things. So um, because they're both considered karmic points. So let's see what she calls for, says about them, just in short. So stepping out of your comfort zone is the north, and don't let your past hold you back is the south. So you can see right away from these without going any further, the south node is related to the, your past life, um, and your north node is where it is that you are heading with this life. So this is a great place. Like you could actually take this shuffle for sort of a past life and what's kind of what might be in play right now in your life based off of a past life and look at the card on either side. Uh, you could look uh, shuffle the card and look for this card on how how can you step out of your comfort zone and look at the cards on either side so that would be a cool way to look at that and if these show up I think this is fantastic because this is indicating okay this is a path that is actually going to take you further down the way you're trying to get to okay what's going on is something that there may be something about what the situation you're doing the reading about that is linked to a past life so I actually really like that these cards are included in the deck I do apologize. I feel like the light's probably changing a lot because it's beautiful. It was really gloomy and now it's absolutely beautiful and bright and I don't really want to shut the curtains. So these are sort of like the extra special cards, special moon cards. So we have the special moon cards. We have the um, cycle of the moon here. I guess we'll keep those apart for right now. And then we have the full moon 
and the new moon in each one of the signs. So I think we're gonna start here. This is where I kind of wish that there were just keywords and not uh, statements because sometimes it's just state the statements aren't my favorite. It's something I can work with, but they're not always my favorite. So I'm going to look at, let's look at these together and then we'll go to the other ones. So we have the full moon as a fiery climax approaching in Aries. And then we have, it's time to take action. So very action climactic oriented here. Here we have prosperity lies ahead with the new moon and the full moon is your dreams need a practical plan. Time to kind of root and ground yourself. Patrick, as my friend Patrick as a Taurus, he wasn't an overly thrilled with this as a full moon um, statement. Um, I think that it could be energy there. You kind of reached the halfway point and in trying to uh, manifest your intentions and it might be time to sort of root it and ground it and get a little bit more practical if you want this to continue to kind of move your way forward perhaps. But we should probably have these switched, but we're going to continue as we started. <laughs> Gemini, the answers you need are coming and communication is key. I do like this uh, picture of the twins. You can see the coloration remains the same. One obviously has the full moon, one has the new moon above with that below. But you can see how they kind of correlate and go together. Personal issues reaches resolution. You and your loved ones are safe. See, for me, that is too specific. So when I'm doing oracle readings, I don't want, this is just a personal issue reaches a resolution. Still a little bit, but it, it could work. You and your loved ones are safe. I don't, you know, that in terms of specific questions, I feel like those, that's a little bit too specific to, um, easily meld into all um, different questions. You just have to understand, you know, this is key with Oracle decks. Um, these are just suggestions, right? You've got that it's full moon in Cancer. You've got that it's new moon in Cancer. Um, this is sort of a suggestion here. Um, and then you can to take a little time to look up what is a full moon energy, what is cancer energy, and what those two things might mean together, and kind of come to your own conclusion. Now, of course, there is more information in the book. When we get to Libra, uh, I will uh, we'll do go ahead and read read those. Although my moon is not in Libra, but um, I think my moon is in Sagittarius. Let me look. I don't know why I always forget that because I always you know pay attention obviously as we do to Libra. Our sun signs, even though we are not just our sun signs. That is very misleading when you just look at your sun signs. Um, let me go back. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, Sagittarius. So when we get to Sagittarius. So here we have Leo with the sort of yellow tones here. Don't let your pride get in your way. Confidence is key to your success. You are good enough. It is a time to give rather than take with uh, Virgo. I love the green there. I should do. I'll look at that in a minute. Uh, here's Libra. 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 See, like this, a new romantic cycle begins. I don't like that terminology because what if it's a work question? Obviously, I, I understand that it's more about a partnership and a coming together, but I feel like that terminology is way too specific to uh, that could trip people up in reading these in other kinds of situations that have nothing to do with a romantic situation. If I'm reading about internal things, romantic situation is not what I'm reading about and not what a new moon in Libra is going to be saying to me. So if I have a quibble here, I love, love, love the artwork. I love the cardstock. Um, my, one of my quibbles is with the some of the phrases. Uh, here we have Scorpio, time to release negativity and work through your fears. See, those can go with any situation. I love this uh, Sagittarius. So let's go ahead and read a full moon in Sagittarius, just so you get a feel for the guidebook, which is important. Where did I stick the guidebook? Right here. So these are new moons, full moons in Sagittarius. So 
I do not have my glasses on. Are you thinking too much about the details of your dilemma? Fretting over minutia can be a counterproductive, or perhaps you're being all talk and no action. This card is a reminder that while it's good to think things through, sometimes you need to step back and look at the bigger picture. What do you see? What do you then see about your current situation? What's the most positive thought you can have about it? Now is the time to count your blessings, even if you don't yet have exactly what you want. This is also a reminder that we often have to take a few risks and go with the uncertainty on this journey called life. Try to keep an open mind about what's for the best. The universe could surprise you. Uh, attuned to the moon says take time out for a mini break or adventure. Additional meanings. She does give you a section for additional meanings, which I think is helpful. This situation may have come around because you've been distracted. Be confident without being overconfident to win the day. Have you shown that you care? If not, now is the time. Find a balance between speaking your mind and saying too much. The teaching says the full moon in Sagittarius is a time when we are reminded that life is an adventure and there's a big wide world to see beyond our backyard. It's about having fun and being prepared to sail into uncharted territory. It's about the big ideas versus the details. No matter when you draw this card, it encourages you to look at the bigger picture. So let's go back real quick. I'm going to go back to full moon. Or no, I think it was New Moon. Let's go back to New Moon and Libra. It's this new romantic. I'm going to look. Let's take a look at the extra ideas. So uh, a new, the, the phrase is a new romantic cycle begins. Some extra meanings are feel more, think less. See, that to me would have been better than this romantic. Marriage or engagement is on the cards. That's pretty much, yeah. A legal matter will go your way. Pay some attention to your appearance, but don't be all about appearances. Personally, I think this feel more think less is probably the best one to have put on there. Um, but then it goes in. So, so the guidebook is obviously going to give you other ideas. So if you hit one of these phrases and you're like, what? Uh, how does that apply to my work situation? You know, take a step back maybe. Again, either step back into the guidebook, but then also using another resource. Think about what is a full moon to you and what is Sagittarius or Libra or what are these kinds of energies to you and what does that mean when you put those together? It's like stepping back into the minors. What's the number? What's the suit? Kind of put them together and you're going to get a base idea. Idea. Beautiful cards, though. Beautiful cards. Uh, Capricorn, the end of a tough, tough cycle approaches, and your hard work is paying off. Show the world the real you. Bring love into the situation. Balance spirituality and practice. This is beautiful. I absolutely love this image. Meditate and contemplate. So those are the new and full moons in their um, sign. So let's quickly go, even though we've talked about these, I just want to quickly go through them so that you can just see the images. I won't spend much time. So we have the new moon, the waxing crescent, the first quarter moon, the gibbous moon. I love these images. Uh, the full moon. The disseminating moon, the third quarter moon, the basalmic moon. So that's the moon cycles. Then we have the waning moon. I, I've got these a little mixed up from when I did that, so <laughs> that's all right. The waning moon, the waxing moon. We have the mutable water motion here. We have the fixed moon with the mountains. And we have the sense of be bold uh, and these trees kind of pointing upward. They are beautiful images. We have the new moon eclipse and the full moon eclipse. We have the void, of course. Nothing is kind of a standstill here. We have the super moon with emotions running high and believe in the impossible with those rare blue moons. They're not super rare, but they're rare. And then don't be held back by your past. 
and uh, step out of your comfort zone into your future with the north and south nodes. So that is a look at all of the cards. So let's zoom back out. I do plan on trimming these in, or edging these, not trimming, edging these in black uh, because there is a lot of black on the back uh, as well as this sort of indigo color, but rather than trying to match the indigo, plus it's night and I like the idea of black. So Patrick uh, did his in black and they look fantastic. So I've already shuffled these. I did a reading. At first I was a little stumped because I'm using it without a question and having the void of course. I felt like it just sort of ended the message, but it ended up being a really good reading when I put a little focus on the central card, which I normally do if I don't have a question. Um, and it's more of a general reading. So again, there are two ways you could use this. One is to simply set these cards out when they apply to the heavens, right? So when it is the new moon in Sagittarius, pulling that card out and setting it out um, as sort of, and then doing a reading along with it and or just having it set up on sacred space. The other thing is to use it obviously as an oracle deck. So here we have the new moon in Cancer, <coughs> excuse me, the north node. So because I'm looking at the central card, okay, this is how can we push, push ourselves forward. Oops, I got to go for the bottom one, sorry. Um, what's interesting here is that we have this idea of safety with the new moon in Cancer. Let's go to the new moon in Cancer because this is one of the ones I wasn't thrilled with the statement. But I love this idea of this full moon eclipse where things are in our reach. So do you be willing to push yourself a little bit harder because you might be getting ready to make a major step forward that is about sort of your life purpose in this incarnation, if you believe in reincarnation, as I do. So that's something to look at. So if, as you can see, I, all the new moons are together, so it's pretty easy to um, then just go here and find the page number and or just go to the section here and find them. I didn't find it hard to find the cards here. I'm going to look at the other. Let someone get a bit closer to you. A new cycle is starting for your child or children. It's time to review your goals. That's, I think, a good one uh, for, for this. It's like, okay, it's time to stop for a minute and review what it is that you're trying to accomplish in your life, right? Because right now is a time to be pushing forward towards achieving some of those goals for this lifetime because we do have the node here. And so maybe we've got to stop for a minute and really think about what it is that you want and what you're trying to accomplish before you go on. So I do actually like these. I've used these in readings and I have enjoyed them. But I have, again, I sometimes find, I wish that they had just been keywords. Um, because keywords, you can kind of just say, okay, I'll take those as a suggestion and then roll with it. Whereas statements, even though you say to yourself, okay, well, that's great. That's a suggestion. Sometimes Sometimes we get, or sentences like this, sometimes we get a little hooked on those sentences and we don't go the step forward to do the work of thinking, well, what else might this mean in that reading, in the particular reading? So that's, that's my minor quibble about this deck, even though I think it's absolutely beautiful and one that I am glad to have in my collection. So I hope that this uh, helps. Again, we've had both of these uh, moon decks come out. Uh, in a relatively same time period, and so I hope that this helps you in deciding which one may resonate the most with you and or which one uh, may not or both may not. So I hope that this helps you in some way.